Nigel, you busy? Okay, you're busy. Hey, hi, hello. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess and welcome to another installment of Book Community where I try to keep you abreast of the goings on in the bookish community. So we all know that the bookish community knows no peace. Book Twitter never stops. So of course there's ongoing mess. Some that's kind of lighthearted and some that's a little worse, but I'll start off with something that's funny. So somehow people still don't know that you do not come for Miss Nora Roberts or her work. So one of Nora Roberts' books, Brazen Virtue, is being adapted for Netflix and Alyssa Milano is starring in the show. She is very outspoken on Twitter about her political beliefs. She leans to the left. So of course some of Nora's readers who are conservative white women are very upset. And so on Nora's Facebook page when it was shared that this adaptation was happening and that Alyssa Milano was going to be starring in it, so many people were upset. I went to the Facebook page, there were so many comments, I couldn't go through them all. A lot of the comments that I saw on the Facebook were like, I was so excited about this, but I will not watch it because of the actress, like, oh, such a shame you're ruining this adaptation with Alyssa Milano and so on and so forth. I'm sure there were way worse ones, but I kept looking through the comments and I mean, there are thousands. So I was like, okay, I'm not gonna keep going through here, but I guess it got bad enough that Miss Nora had to put down the pin and she had to come check people says to set the scene for this post early this evening I shared the news on Facebook that Nora's brazen virtue will be adapted for a Netflix movie and provided a link to the Hollywood reporter which broke the story within seconds the reaction came and completely shocked me so much outright hatred for the actress nearly 1,000 comments in an hour with a large majority making rude inflammatory comments about Alyssa, Mil Alyssa Milano and how they would never watch the film ever I gave Nora a heads up about the comments and what she saw in red stunned her so much so she wrote a statement for Facebook and asked me to post it here as well, Laura. So Nora's statement says, I read many of the comments on Laura's announcement of the Brazen Virtue adaptation for Netflix starring Alyssa Milano, and I'm simply and sincerely appalled. The vitriol, the hatred, the anger, the bitterness, and the demands are astounding to me. By and large, I keep politics off my pages. That's my choice. Now many readers have dragged their own into onto this page, so I'm going to state for the record, I'm a liberal Democrat. Always have been, always will be. And as one, I've always believed everyone has a right to their political beliefs and has a right to express their opinions, but I don't have to tolerate insults and ugliness on my page. For those who want to claim freedom of speech, look it up. This Facebook page isn't the government. Some have comments on here using liberal as a slur and insult, equating it with communism. Others have used outright slurs against an actress while claiming she should keep her opinions to herself. No doubt these same people would be quick to assert their own First Amendment rights. Some will never read me again because Milano will headline this adaptation. One reader stated she intended to burn all my books in her collection for this choice of actress. Think about that, burning books. Get a visual? I sure do. Another claims she can only support like-minded artists. Really? I can only imagine the books, songs, movies I'd have missed if I felt this way and refused to read, watch, listen to those who have contributed to or performed them who hold different political viewpoints from my own. Over this past long, hard year, we've lost over 400,000 friends, loved ones, neighbors to COVID. We've been isolated from each other and I, for one, yearn for the company of my pals again. I wonder truly why this grief, this hardship, hasn't taught so many of us we need each other. Instead, as illustrated by that comment section, it's hardened far too many of us into an us and them mentality. The viciousness I read in too many comments below hurts my heart and realizing because I'm a liberal Democrat, many of those comments are directed at me for that reason alone is a real eye opener. Watch the movie when it comes out or don't. But lobbing nastiness at an actress or threatening me doesn't do anything but illustrate your own limitations, Nora. Read them for filth again. Imagine, imagine thinking, saying, I'm not reading any more of your books is really going to hurt the Nora Roberts. Child, please. And so I'm glad she said that. She checked those fools real quickly and no one is going to miss your viewership. No one is going to miss your readership because trust, she has 
thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of other fans who will continue to read her work, watch her adaptations, and you little salty bitches can just be sad about it at home. Bye-bye. <laughs> One of my favorite comments on Twitter was from the Beverly Jenkins who said, folks on her page showing their ass like it's on sale. I stand the queen. And the OP re replied, I cannot even fathom being so willing to dig my own grave like that. And Beverly Jenkins replied, this pandemic needs to live so these people can go back to work. Brains are clearly rotting. Yes, so much yes to that statement. I just thought that was funny. People keep trying it and they keep getting shut down. So I loved it. Also the other week, there was some dude on Twitter who gave harsh writing advice. And I don't know if this had been a thread started because I saw a lot of people doing harsh writing advice or if he said this and everyone was mocking him. But he's, his advice was, your writer friends are also your competition, sorry. And I saw that, I was like, ew, that's negative. And so of course a lot of authors uh, replied to that or quote tweeted it. Tessa Dare said, harsh writing advice and bad writing advice are often confused. Do you on your own publish enough books a year that your ideal reader would never read a book from anyone else? Unless the answer is yes, other authors, good ones are essential to your career. She continued, if my readers didn't have a metric effect ton of other historical romances to read in between the ones I publish, they would forget the subgenre even exists. Authors don't all have to be BFFs, but it's silly to act like we're competing in a zero sum game. And even though you don't have to be BFFs, writing is better, healthier, and more fun when you have good friends who are also writers. I would not be here if not for having supportive, talented, genuine writer friends. I love you, friends. Rebecca Witherspoon tweeted, white women in my mentions keep dunking on this guy as if there aren't hordes of white women who spent years viewing authors of color as competition. My call is coming from inside the house, ladies. A, a bit of shade, but you know, very true. But then there were really funny responses like Samantha Shannon said harsh writing advice. At some point, your editor will expect a plot rather than just characters looking at each other very tensely for 500 pages. Sorry. Rebecca Kwong said, harsh writing advice, you have to write. And I was like, wow, she just attacked me on Twitter. This tweet from Lindsay Ellis said, harsh writing advice, the Phantom of the Opera is in the public domain. So if you are not writing a Phantom of the Opera retelling, it is a hate crime. <laughs> it's said, harsh writing advice, if you open your manuscript as much as you did Twitter, it'd be done by now. See, what he didn't have to do was come at my neck like that. But if you want to look, there's so many funny ones and there's some serious ones. But then I did see this one. that said, harsh writing advice. Don't give a one or two star review to an indie book. They wrote a book, they tried. Your poor review will only end up discouraging them or perhaps kill their dream of making it. Share constructive feedback privately and encourage them to do better. To the ones saying ratings are for readers, this tweet is directed at writers. One, most indie books end up being read by writers in the community unless they have a, ho a huge social media following and fans. Two, yes reviews matter, but your one star may be the reason someone doesn't buy it. Because someone said, I, re I rate this comment one star. And they replied, did I say that? You are mincing my words. I said, send feedback privately then do harm to their book sales or their reputation as a writer publicly. We owe that much to people who follow their passion just like us. So I don't know. I, you're a writer, an author who's indie published. Do you have any thoughts on that? Because I don't, I totally can understand how, especially if it's indie published, most of the time it's going to get less, you know, views or reads than a traditionally published book. But if you're also a writer and a reader, would you not publicly give it a bad rating? So are you always supposed to send it directly to the person? I don't know, I'm not in that space of, of you know, being a writer or publishing a book. So if you are, I would love to hear your take on that. So there's a dark romance book that was released in December of 2020 by C.E. Ritchie called Follow the River. And it says that it is a mature new adult bully slash enemies to lovers male male romance with dark themes there will be triggering content for some readers specific triggers will not be listed at the beginning of the book as they will be spoilers so please be advised that if you have triggers any at all this book might not be for you this is on goodreads this person's tweet said i thought what the author had in the book's blurb was bad enough when i saw it earlier this month but note this author's note in the book is worse authors please don't do this just list, list out the trigger warnings 
So on the Goodreads, it already says that there are triggers, but they will not list specific because they think they're spoilers. And then there's an author's note in the book that goes in deeper. And I'm going to read that to you. So the author's note says this book is a work of fiction, but that does not mean there aren't very realistic incidents that could be triggering to some readers. Now I hate trigger warnings. I believe that they can absolutely ruin a book. And as such, I will not be listing the specific triggers within this book. This is a blanket trigger warning. This book is meant to go in blind. I purposely written the blurb to reveal absolutely nothing about the overall plot of this book. Do not read spoilers if only for you to receive the full impact of the book in both a plot and emotional aspect. Just trust me, okay? For many readers, you will experience a variety of emotional reactions and that is a good thing. This book is meant to make you feel. I have no desire to lessen that for you by telling you all the things that happen within these pages that might make someone uncomfortable. That being said, if you have any triggers, any at all, I would suggest reaching out to me to ask if you will be okay reading this book or maybe giving this book a pass altogether. What I don't suggest, ignoring this altogether and then going and ruining the book for others in any way, shape or form, because let's be real, I tried to warn you, don't be a Karen y'all and oof that is so bad so again this book is called follow the river and that statement is terrible for many reasons because as people have stated before trigger warnings are not spoilers and if there are people who don't need trigger warnings or decide not to read them then they can kindly skip over them but for other readers you can just place it there if you spent all that time typing out how triggering your book is but you won't talk about the triggers you could have just listed them there and kept it pushing so i don't know why you went through all that effort to be like my book is so triggering my book is so triggering but i'm not going to tell you what and then it's also worrisome because it's a, a woman writing a male male romance that's so deeply triggering so I feel kind of weird and icky about that too I'm, I'm not going to read it so there's varying reviews there are some five stars there's a one star some saying that I'm not going to spoil anything um nothing extraordinary friends to enemies to lovers but thank you Izzy that wrote out the trigger warnings that say it so there's trigger warnings for rape committed by both the main character and the love interest abuse and molestation from a step parent and biphobia another review also has mentions of sexual abuse of a minor ptsd depression mentions of suicidal ideation mentions of a suicide attempt again homophobia biphobia use use of the f slur sexual harassment, drug use, bad therapist, sexual assault slash rape on page between love interests, graphic sexual abuse of a minor by a parental figure. So there's a lot in here and this just sounds like I'm not the one to get in and discuss what should be in books and what should not be, especially when I haven't read them, but this just sounds like it has some problems. So if you're going to read it, at least you know those trigger warnings going into it. I don't agree with that author statement, like saying that your book has mentions of suicidal ideation or, you know, domestic abuse or biphobia. How does that spoil a book? It doesn't. So just put it there. Anyway, raggedy. I don't like that. So I'm definitely not reading that book. But you know what? Do what you want. This next thing is kind of weird. I had to kind of think about it for a little while to understand why people were upset and so read with Cindy who is one of the larger booktube creators uh, very popular for her videos um, like reading popular books and kind of dissecting them or ranting on them because she has very like dry humor people find her very funny so it is known that Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom are like some of her favorite books and the Netflix adaptation is coming in April. So recently there were pictures revealed of the cast. And I guess that made her want to tweet out some jokes about the books. I think this was recently, I don't follow her on Twitter. That caused her to post jokes about the characters on Twitter. In addition to some of these are older screenshots. Now they're screenshots because I think most of these tweets have been deleted, but they're from other people. So 
This thread says, if you're confused about the read with Cindy situation, this thread will include screenshots of everything she has said so far. So this tweet, I don't know when it was said. One said, did I really just see a TikTok saying Six of Crows is underrated? Cindy quote tweeted, Six of Crows is underrated. There are literally thousands of people there to watch a Netflix adaptation of an edgelord virgin who wears a fedora and vomits anytime his crush touches him for a point one second. So if you don't know, Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom is a duology written by Lee Bardugo. It's in the Grishaverse, so it comes after the Shadow and Bone trilogy. And most of the characters in Six of Crows have some kind of trauma or issue that they're dealing with. And so people are upset at the jokes because they basically poke fun at those that trauma or issues that the characters are dealing with and at first I was like well they are fictional characters but then some people were mentioning how they could see themselves in those characters or relate to these issues or trauma that the characters are dealing with and I won't go into in depth any of them um if you haven't read the book but so people were feeling upset at that and then I guess Cindy saw backlash enough to delete the tweets but um other people also were upset because the books are written I think there are 16 in the books in the show obviously they're over 18 but in the books they are written as 16 and so they felt also like some of these tweets are very like sexualization of minors especially like Kaz so I'm just going to read a few more of the tweets this one is older from 2018 but it said at least Nina is straightforward enough to bone Matthias whenever she wants. Meanwhile, I gotta wait 500 years for Kaz the Virgin and Inej the Triggered to barely graze each other's skin. And another one is Wylan Van Eck wasn't cast because he couldn't read his lines because he is, he can't, in the book he can't read, he's illiterate. That one's from 2019. This one is more recent with a picture of the actor that's portraying Kaz. Now, I will not lie. I do not like how he looks. I don't like the hat. I don't like the look. But Cindy said, you think you can hurt my feelings? My man can't touch me without vomiting and he wears a fedora because Kaz has like an aversion to touching people. It's explained in the book. Cindy, again, this is a 2019. Time and time again, people have dismissed young adult books to be trivial escapism, when really they provide representation for young people, touch upon real world themes, and force us to ask important questions like, do y'all think Kaz Brecker is a virgin who's about to bust a nut? So that one started out more serious and then ended. So you see there's like a theme of, I guess, poking fun at Kaz being a virgin, his touch aversion, and, and things like that. The Six of Crows gang getting together to help Kaz touch phobia. And someone was reading the book and said, why is Kaz, Kaz such a dick? Oh my God. And she said, he's pent up. Like, you know, he has pent up sexual aggression basically, or like sexual tension. And then someone said her apology and it's a screenshot, but it looks like a DM. Um, and it says, hey, I just wanted to let you know I'm deleting all past tweets, including my apology. This was in August 2019. Because I figured based on the responses, it's best to just remove everything. I really do mean my apology, but don't want to hurt people more and add salt to the wound, which I think I did by tweeting about it. I'm not sure what the best thing to do. So it might just be me shutting up and not making it worse. I just wanted to say I appreciate you for calling this out though. I never want to hurt anyone, but the fact is I did. So I want to make sure from now on I do the least damage as possible. Thank you again. But yeah, that says August, 2018, I'm pretty sure. So those were the majority of the tweets. And I just saw people being upset about that. And some people were like, why are you trying to cancel her? And they're like, I'm not trying to cancel her. I'm just, she needs to take account accountability and proper, properly apologize. Um, someone said, if you believe fiction does not affect reality, that's your own problem, but they being fictional does not make it better or okay. Why be so obsessed with them touching? But again, so a lot of the issues are that they feel like she is invalidating the trauma from some of the characters, sexualizing some of them, and you know, making fun of Wyland for not being able to read. So I totally understand if you see these characters and their trauma, they're the a disability that they deal with, and you see yourself in that, and then see someone poking fun at it, told it can be upsetting, and then just to delete the tweets and not make an apology. And the one I showed you was obviously from 2018 because there was some tweets about that back then, but there also have been some more recent ones. So 
I just thought I'd bring that up. I only really saw like a small mention of it and I had to kind of go digging because I don't follow Cindy. But you know, it's not to cancel, but it's just like, I think that's her, her humor is very kind of like dark and cynical like that. So maybe at the time it seemed funny and then obviously people were hurt by that. And I don't think she did it in any way to be like vicious or to say, I don't value people who have, you know, trauma or disabilities, but sometimes we can think things are funny and people don't take them funny or it didn't come out the right way. So sometimes we have to be like, my bad. So I don't know. So buckle the fuck up for this last story. You might want to pause and go get a snack because it's ridiculous, but it's like a lifetime movie. So you may need popcorn. So someone tagged me in a thread on Twitter and the tweet was from Maureen Johnson. It says, everyone else, slow night. YA Twitter, the woman the astronaut put on diapers and tried to kill, but luckily failed, has been fired from her agent in job for having a secret parlor account. And I read that and I was like, I don't know what the hell this means. And people in the comments were just like, oh, this makes so much sense. Is it weird? I understood this. And I'm like, what are y'all talking about? What is going on here? I do not understand. I kept reading it. I read it slowly. I tried to add in my own punctuation. I was not getting it. So I literally highlighted it and I copied and pasted it and Googled. And I was like, can someone help me understand? Then someone also added an article in the thread. So I'm going to try to talk about this and make it make sense. So a while ago, there was an astronaut. So this is in 2007, there was an astronaut, Lisa Nowak, who was married at the time, but was having an affair with another astronaut named Kim Opheline. I might be saying that wrong. We've got two astronauts. We've got Lisa, who is married but separated in 2007, and William, who is divorced. He got divorced in 2005, and they are having an affair together. And Lisa was thinking that she was going to have a long-term relationship, a future with William. But in mid-January 2007, William let Lisa know that he was in an exclusive relationship with Colleen, who was an Air Force captain. So she's over here thinking, I've got a future with this man. She already separated from her husband, but he was like, nah, I've got somebody else in a serious relationship. But so he thought that Lisa was hurt, but she accepted it, was going to move on. She still had a key to his apartment though. So she used the key to his apartment and she went in, got on his computer and was able to access emails between William and Colleen. In one of the emails, Colleen said, will have to control myself when I see you. First urge will be to rip your clothes off, throw you on the ground and love the hell out of you. And then Lisa lost it. So after she read these emails, she also saw that they were um, going to be meeting up and saw her Colleen's return flight from Houston to Orlando. And so she made the drive from Houston to Orlando, 900 miles, so that she can meet Colleen at the airport when she got off the plane. Another note in this story is that apparently she wore diapers during this drive so she didn't have to stop. But they, they say that cannot be proven or her lawyers did, said that's not true. So she, so again, Lisa, the spurned ex-lover of William found out that Colleen was flying to Florida to meet William. So Lisa left Houston to drive to Orlando to meet Colleen when she got off the plane. So she, um, so Colleen gets to Orlando. She had to wait for her delayed luggage and then took a shuttle to the bus parking lot. Lisa is wearing a wig and a trench coat. She gets on that same shuttle cause she's following Colleen. So once, and Colleen kind of notices her cause she looks kind of weird and out of place. So she's getting to her car and Lisa went up to Colleen, said that whoever was supposed to pick her up, her boyfriend didn't show up, can I get a ride? And Colleen's like, no, but like I can help you call to like get a different ride. And so she had cracked her car window and Lisa sprayed Colleen with pepper spray. And fortunately Colleen was able to drive away. She called the police and they apprehended Lisa. So what they found in Lisa's car or found on Lisa were hundreds of dollars in cash, printouts of the personal emails between William and Colleen, pepper spray, a knife, rubber tubing, gloves, a BB gun, a mallet, and a computer disc, 
that held images of bondage scenes in Lisa's belongings. So the police told Colleen who Lisa was and she was like, hmm, that sounds familiar. So Colleen calls her Bay William and he's like, yeah, that's Lisa. Because apparently William had accidentally called Colleen Lisa in bed one time. So they made the connection anyway anyway they were trying to say that it was attempted murder but then her lawyers pled for insanity lisa ended up pleading guilty to burglary and misdemeanor battery so she just got a year of prob probation community service and she had to write a letter to colleen apologizing and uh colleen she was not happy because she told the court that it was in her eyes a blood chilling expression of limitless rage and glee and that she was left with nightmares and dizzy spells and felt like she needed weapons to protect herself anyway william and colleen eventually got married they have a son they live in alaska together colleen became a literary agent and you're like what the fuck does this have to do with books oh okay so colleen who the who felt like she was going to be murdered by Lisa became a agent at Jennifer De Chiara Literary Agency, if I'm saying that right. And they found out that she was using Parlor and Gab, which are like super right wing social media platforms that super conservative, racist, insurrectionist people have been using. And so they found that out and they let her go. So Colleen said, well, thanks Twitter and JD Lit Agency. I just got fired because I'm a Christian and a conservative. The agency said they were distressed to discover this morning, January 25th, that one of our agents has been using the social media platforms Gab and Parler. We do not condone this activity and we apologize to anyone who has been affected or offended by this. The Jennifer De Chiara literary, literary Agency has in the past and will continue to ensure a voice of unity, equality, and one that is on the side of social justice. So as of this morning, Colleen Offenline is no longer an agent at the Jennifer De Chiara Literary Agency. So it said a search through Colleen's Twitter uh, showed that she joined Parlor last year. A November 12th tweet said that she invited followers to join her on the conservative social network, which she described as a great platform with no censorship. And she also suggested earlier this month that she may also use the far right, far white, far right social networking site Gab. And so it was brought to the attention of the literary agency and they were like, well, thank you for bringing that to our attention. She's no longer an agent here. So wow the fuck, wow, what a mess. But I love the, I'm, I can no longer be an agent because I'm a conservative and Christian, yeah. Well, it's because you're hateful. <laughs> Wasn't that the wildest story? I will link the articles that I read to piece this together in the description because it is so bonkers. And at first I thought it was the lady Lisa who was the astronaut who became a literary agent. And I was so confused trying to put the story together. But then I realized it was Colleen who married William who was the literary agent, well, was and is now fired. I'm sure she'll probably find some super conservative literary agency to go to, whatever. But I just wanted to end on that because that shit was wild as hell. What the fuck? <laughs> but anyway, that was some of the things that have been happening this past week. There is more things that I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna wait till next week, if I'll do part two. Who knows, every time I say I'm gonna wait till next week, a bunch of stuff pops up, so we'll see. You know, you want to hit that subscribe and notification bell so you can be notified as soon as there is another book community video out. Please feel free and give this a like. But everything, any sources, resources, I have a link in the description box. There's also my social media ways to support my channel linked down there below as well. But thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. I'm tired, boo boo. Are you so tired? Is editing so exhausting?